Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivational speaker, and health coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today, we've got a special guest, and her name is Joanne Kling, and she's going to talk about P-I-E-S. But first, Joan, tell us about yourself, who you are, where you come from, um, which I already know already, but all these things to know who you are. Oh my gosh, I got to tell you that right now I'm just sitting here in my um, house in San Diego, um, just smiling. But I just love life is a shuffle. And, you know, whenever I talk to people, I get like these inspirations, like maybe I should spin my pie wheel. But um, we'll get to we'll get to my pie wheel later. But um, who am I? I, um, I call myself like a seeker uh inquisitor i've always asked a lot of questions and in fact i don't know if you have ever experienced this but the old typewriters some artists are making them into artwork so my daughter gave me a bookmark with the question mark on it this was years ago she saw it at a fair or something she said i got you the question i got you the question mark because you ask a lot of questions and i said to her what do you mean by that I get a kick out of that because I asked her a question, um, but she um, she doesn't remember that. So anyway, ask all that questions. Who am I? I am uh, professionally. I spent most of my life in government, government work in local governments in a thing called um, code enforcement, which um, we enforce building, planning, zoning, land use codes, and um, Basically, neighbors complain about each other. So I did that for a really, really long time. And I really learned one of my basic tenets of coaching is that everyone just wants to be seen. Nobody wants to be invisible. I don't know if you've ever seen that um, movie Chicago. There's one song in there where the guy sings Mr. Cellophane. It's like you could walk right by me, look right through me and never know my name. That's some of the lyrics. So like when I would come onto someone's private property, because I had to tell them they had to change something on their property that was in violation of the zoning codes or building code or whatever. You know, they just, they're not as upset about that as can you just treat me like a human being and not like another number and don't act like you're the government and you have all the power and I have no power. So bottom line, people just want to be seen, acknowledged, like my existence is worth something. So, um, so then I became a life coach. I, um, I call myself a self leadership expert because I specialize in all leadership starts with self. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of Michael Jackson's song where he says, you know, you, you know, change the person in the mirror. And um, Gandhi that says, be the change you want to see in the world. Instead of pointing your finger at this should change, this or ch- this should change. Again, back to my job, it's my job in government. Do you even know your neighbor's names? Like you're, you're talking about world politics and national politics, but you probably wouldn't. Most people that I've encountered in the business probably wouldn't pull up their neighbor's trash cans. You know, they went on vacation, they forgot or whatever. And, you know, are we nice to, are we just nice in general? So, you know, like, anyway, I'm kind of probably getting off on a tangent. So I like to start with self, self leadership, and then team leadership, then organizational leadership. So I developed this system called PIES. Um, out of necessity, actually, I work for this company called Better Up, and um, I had to, and during the application they had a pretty grueling application process. So kudos to them, and I I had to submit videos, and so I had set aside this specific time that I'm going to do these videos. But I don't even know what they're going to ask me. So I get my camera set up and I get ready. And, and the first question is, what is your coaching? Ph- tell us about your coaching philosophy for 90 seconds. And I was like, oh, shoot. It's probably something I should know is my coaching philosophy. What do I, what is my coaching philosophy? So 
I have always had as a tagline, permission to be great is granted. And that came from Marianne Williamson's quote. It's a pretty famous quote. In fact, Nelson Mandela used it in one of his speeches. So a lot of people think it's his, but it came from her, but blah, blah, blah. But she says, she says basically, um, the more you let your light shine, it gives other people permission to shine. And so I just like the word permission that a lot of us just haven't been given permission to do what we want to do because what we wanted to do was too scary for other people. And all of us here as a coach, we are creatives. We're thinking outside the box. We're just not different. So, I mean, we're just different. And so like when I was a kid, a lot of times I was told, all of us are told don't, we're told don't more than do. And so, um, Oh, you don't want to do that. Oh, you don't want to go there. Oh, you don't want to take that chance. Oh, you know, so-and-so tried that. That didn't work, you know. Um, So we just kind of get smaller and smaller and smaller and take our light and just dim it. So the P is permission to be great is granted. So I'm in front of this computer and like, okay, trying to figure out my philosophy. Okay, I got that. What else do I believe? I really believe in um, imperfection. That imperfection lies in the imperfection lies, creativity, a childlike awe and wonder. Uh, Like a child just keeps trying to put the blocks together differently. They're not beating themselves up. They're not saying, oh, that was stupid. They're just going, okay, let me try this way. Let me try this way. And, um, And then countless, I'm sure you've looked them up yourselves. Like Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. Dr. Seuss got rejected like, 25, 30 times for all of his writing. Like he couldn't get anyone to publish his books. So, I mean, there's stuff like that all over the place. So, um, to just, to just try it and be willing to fail. Those that are where, where you want to be are there because they have accepted failure as a part of it. Um, then the next thing that I came up with was, um, eyes on self because I, I work with a lot of um, women in different organizations and uh, I'm always telling them and I have been told keep your eyes on yourself eyes on yourself eyes on self eyes on self um, you're criticizing this person for believing that or doing that well but you're intolerant of this and that so um, I was taught that if you're it's a question that, you know, your listeners can ponder if I'm intolerant of the intolerant, am I intolerant? So that's a pretty deep, it's a deep philosophical question, but, um, so, you know, just change starts with self. What tiny baby step are you willing to take today? And then, um, we can't do it alone. So, I added support system or support community creation. I can't decide really which if I'm going to go with support system or support community creation, but I'm going to help you build your own board of directors, your own, like we were talking before we went live, like who can I like actually go? Oh my God, guess what just happened? I just signed this huge contract. Somebody who's going to, um, accept you and support you and not make me be a bragger, but at least let me gloat for a second or two. Like, Oh my God, this is actually happening. This is a lifetime dream. It seems like it's happening. I I want I want someone to, that I can, that can support me. And then in all areas of your life, if you, if you have a, if you, if you think of yourself as a corporation, you know, there's a financial officer, there's an operations officer, there's someone who takes care of your health, there's someone who takes care of your spirituality, there, there's people that you turn to for all those different areas. And so I think it's just so important to, to have people. people. People need people, like Barbara Streisand used to say, but um, especially now, in, we're recording this during the COVID um, Isolation is killer. And um, 
a lot of people cure loneliness by isolation by isolation and it doesn't work. And so, especially as you get older, cause you know, I'm older than you, I'm 60. And as you get older, it's so important to have some sort of community, someone that, you know, knows I'm alive or dead today. And, um, so that is my coaching philosophy. And it came to me, I have a very, very strong faith in God. And, um, that just came to me in like five minutes and I submitted it for my application. And then I kind of started telling people about it and they were kind of getting blown away. And I was going, really, you think it's good? Wow. You think it's good? So, um, so now I've been working on it, expanding on it. I'm working on a book. Um, I just read, if you haven't, if either of you or both of you have not read The Artist Way or your listeners, The Artist Way is something I started during the pandemic and I, it's just changed my life and it's 25 years old. Have you, have either of you heard of it? No, no I have not. I've, I've, okay. Check it out. Check it out. It's an old book and um, it's just about funneling your creativity, letting like the universe take you where it's supposed to take you. And, um, so I just believe in the power of intentionality of making the time to do stuff. And, and it's important to say that I'm like no way near perfect in any of the things I teach. In fact, I'll get a client, I'll have a client and I'll be telling them or discussing something with them. And I just feel like the words are hidden. Most of the time it's on my laptop. So, um, I feel like the words are hitting the screen and coming right back at me. Like as they're coming back toward me, they're going, yeah, why don't you try that Joan? And, um, so I don't know. I just feel like I could talk all day. So (laughs) I know. Um, I just wanted to say something about that one. When you said you were nowhere near perfect, you know, nobody's really perfect. Right. And I'd like to look at that as we are perfectly imperfect. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah, go ahead. I was going to say this, Joan. I was listening to the very beginning about, I I want you to kind of give more detail because something had kind of resonated with me when I was a young kid, not so much now, um, after going through IPEC training, after kind of realizing, okay, I'm unique, I'm great where I am. Why as human beings are we so um, dest- are so um, destined to fit in? So if someone doesn't fit in or identify with a race or, or anything like that, why, why is it so important for us to fit in? Well, I think kind of back to, uh, I mean, we could debate this um, for for years. And I, and I also tell people like, I'm not a theologian. I'm not a philosopher because people have been asking that question since the beginning of time. And to me, I will just tell you for Joan, because I need connection. I need to feel that, like I was saying in the beginning, that you see me, that I'm here, that my, that my life here has been worth it. Like, I came here to do something, either to teach something or to learn something. And the world is better because I'm here. So, um, and, you know, it's so glorified in the media and stuff. We see people that are always hanging out with all these people and doing these fun things. And, you know, it's not the truth. You know, most people go home after work, turn on the TV and um, have dinner and start again. You know, rinse, lather, rinse and repeat. So, um, I like that. <laughs> yeah, D, I'm saying some old things, lather, lather, rinse and repeat. That was from the, I don't know if shampoo bottles still have that on it, but anyway, um, did that anywhere near come close to like, if you were my client and you asked me that question, I would probably say, why is it, why do you think, why is it important to you? Uh, good question. Glad you asked me that question. It was important to me to fit in. Um, until I really started digging deep the last two years, like it came to the point in my life, I was just broken. And that's kind of how I start the whole evolution of finding a coach and find IPEC and all this great stuff. Um, 
But for me, it, I don't want to fit in anymore. I actually, I rebuke trying to fit in. And just for myself. Now, for those out there, they may say, well, I want to fit in. I don't want to be like anybody else. I, I read this book, um, and I can't think of the title right now because I've read so many books and listened to so many audibles the last two years. But it, it honed on one thing. If you look at an orchestra, right, you got the person playing the flute, person playing the banjo, whatever, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That are, those instruments are humans, meaning that if we play our own tune to beat our own drum, whatever that tune is, flute, microphone, whatever it may be, be, that we actually get more gratification purpose in life. When we do not play the right tune we are given, that's when life doesn't work out for us. And when I realized this more important, when I started playing my tune in life, um, everything started working out for me much better. I got more gratification. I got more happiness when I constantly, and this is just, let's talk about something that was kind of for me, you know, when you look at social media, I'm obviously I'm a personal trainer right now currently. And obviously I'm going to become a life coach full time and motivation speaking, all that good stuff. But social media became this for me. I look at social media and I scroll like a drug. And when I saw someone doing videos or doing downloads or this and this, okay, I got to do this. Okay, this person does this. I got to do this. Joan is, is doing downloads. I got to do what Joan's doing. Okay, Gloria uh-huh, is doing uh-huh. uh, a posting creep. I got to do that. Okay, Bobby's doing it. I'm constantly, I mean, one year I must have spent thousands of dollars on SEOs trying to um, be the best uh, videographer that I, up there, trying to get cameras, trying to get gimbals. I mean, all this stuff because I got to do this. I got to do this. I'm jumping from one thing to another. And that comes down to after the fact, I realized I wasn't playing the right beat in my own tone. So for me, that's when I realized, oh, man, I got to find the right thing. So when I stopped doing all that, I got more peace. When I stopped mm-hmm. doing all that, mm-hmm. I got more freedom to my mind. My mind became more creative. Mm-hmm. I just was myself, whatever that is, right, for me. And so you answer that in the way that resonates with me because now I believe in that. Um, but obviously for our audience out there, because – with everything going on right now with uh, BLM, COVID, pandemic, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. job, home, I mean, every time client I deal with has some kind of issue. I have one client in particular, you know, his girlfriend's living with him now and um, uh, with him and she's petrified of the pandemic. So he's not allowed to go to any gym. He's not allowed to be, go to a grocery store. If he wants to do these things, she makes it, he has to wear a mask. Um, at one point, when it reached 100 degrees out here, he couldn't turn on AC because she was fearful that if you turn on AC, it's going to filter out of COVID. And he had, had mm-hmm. to actually go on the internet, explain to by diagram how it works. So back to my point being is we always want to identify with something. And I think that's to me, is a human flaw, wanting to fit in. Because when you want to fit in, you're all you're doing is comparing yourself to somebody else, whatever that diagram is, and that just creates more suffering. It's kind of a mouthful there, but that that's the way it's done for me. You know what? Um, when you're saying that, I think back of my childhood. I don't know. Um, I, I don't know how far I can remember, but I, I get it that we always try to to fit in. And I know that a lot of my students right now are in that phase right now. And I just remember speaking to one, uh, my former student recently, and she, I asked her what she is afraid of. And she has fears of being alone. And I thought being alone, like if she's alone at home and nobody's at home with her, she said, no, I don't mind that because I can do whatever I want. More like alone of not having friends. But the way I see her is she doesn't necessarily try to fit in because she (laughs) I always make fun of her how she has no filter so she kind of reminds me of me when I was younger because I don't remember seeing myself as always trying to fit in in a certain group or trying to fit in I, I think at one point I thought about it but I couldn't change I couldn't be someone I'm not so I've always been I think I've always tried not tried but I think I've always kind of show to a lot of people who I really am. And if I do try to fit in, I may not be accepted because I'm not exactly who they, you know, they're just not, let's just say they're just not happy with what they see and who I am. So mm-hmm. I, I think for me growing up is probably just acceptance and being accepted. 
But as mm-hmm. far as trying to fit in and trying to be somebody I'm not, I don't think I've ever had, I, I may have had that issue. I, I can't remember, but not too much because I had a hard time changing myself and changing who I'm not. And if if I do, I could try it for like maybe a day or two. I'm not happy. And I go back to my my real self, who I really am. As I've gotten older, then I've realized if they don't like me and they don't like who I am, they don't like my waist and they don't like me. So, yeah, I see what Juan is saying. Like growing up, everybody go, goes um, through that situation, but the, but not necessarily everyone, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's what we're currently talking about. Is it is it is a complicated issue, and I would love to like debate it with you, at a, you know, on that subject only. But yeah, some people have it worse than others growing up, and even as adults. Um, like even if we just take nerds, nerds were really made fun of in my in my time, and now if you're a nerd, you're the coolest guy because you probably invented, you know, you're probably doing something fantastic. But, um, so I would go back to my eyes on self, eyes Mm -hmm. on self, like, like, yeah, nobody wants to eat their lunch alone. Nobody wants to not have a date to the prom or, you know, I mean, they're difficult, painful things that children have to go through that we as adults think is a good idea to have the prom or whatever, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's tough being a kid. What's tough being an adult? I mean, who wants to be an adult? I know I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? There's so much things. There's a lot of things as an adult that we thought, I didn't sign up for this. And why am I doing totally. this? Totally. <laughs> what the heck? Come on. I want to go back to where I just ran around and didn't have mm-hmm. a care in the world. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I really I, I do say- like, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I was going to debate, uh, debate Joe on, 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 Joan on that is I feel better at 37. Obviously, I'm way younger, younger than you. I feel better at 37, 27. So I will not go back to being a kid. Did you yeah, hear what he time. said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear what he said, Joan? Obviously, he's a yeah. lot younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. He had to. He just had to. <laughs> it's okay, Joan. You look good. I don't, I don't take offense. I embrace my <laughs> um, age. What can I tell you? Um, you know what? I have, aren't you more proud of just uh, as you've gotten older after a certain point in your life, you just, you're proud of like just expressing yourself and then just not, you're not afraid of hiding how old you are. Like a lot of other women are, I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, in some ways, I feel like Benjamin Button. I don't know if you ever saw that movie, but like Brad Pitt's in it. Mm-hmm. And he, yes. <laughs> he He's born an old guy. He kind of ages backwards. And sometimes I feel like that. I'm like, wow, I can't believe. Uh, uh, I, I'm not like, I'm not like I would say most 60 year old women. I do things. I do crazy, you know. Oh, I think I'll get my coaching certificate. Yeah. I got, I got my master's degree at 50. I got my coaching certificate, like, I might have been six now, been a few years now. Yeah. But I mean, like, age is just a number. Yes. And um, I do, what I wanted to say earlier was I do like your eye on this one, on your pies. I like the eye, mm-hmm. the imperfection. I think a lot of us, um, has so many people don't realize that we're not perfect. We're, we are imperfect. And I like how you mentioned to basically just embrace that and just shoot for the ex- shoot for excellence, not the perfection. Ex- exactly. Shoot for excellence, not perfection. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. what about those who feels like, oh, what about those who can't seem to get this, in their head, how, how do we help, not help, but how can we get someone out of that situation, you know, where they feel like if something goes wrong, something's not going well, and it, it's not perfect enough, 
And then they tend to go into, I think you mentioned, isolating themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But to them, isolating themselves is how they cope with things and they feel like that's how they heal. Hmm. Okay, so if someone is listening to your broadcast that needs this answer, this is my answer. There is someone out there that loves you and needs you. There is information that you were given that needs to be shared with the world, that you are worthy to be here. Because it just reminds me, you know, for some reason when you said that, it just reminds me of the high rate of teenage suicide that we're having right now and um, and the massive amount of uh, drug addiction on the pharmaceuticals and um, that you're worthy. And basically, I see you. There is someone, if you don't have anyone, if you're listening and this message is really hitting home to you, call one of us, one of the three people on this call. And um, there's just help. There's help available. The problem is getting over our pride to ask for help. And then, then there's a thing called pride in reverse, which is mean, which means like, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth it. Well, you're still thinking about yourself. You're still absorbed in self. You're, you know, I can't do it. I'm not worthy. I never get it right. You're still thinking only about yourself. And um, there are people out there that you can help and that can help you. Does, does that sound like it answers your question? Yes. And I think that's where you, um, on your pies is the S, is the support system. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, we all think that everybody have, have these great support systems and it's not necessarily true. Like you might have to pay, like I see a therapist, I pay a therapist to, to go over some of this stuff with. So some people are in your inner circle. Some people you pay, I pay to see a dentist. I pay to see the eye doctor when I'm having a problem. And so, um, and there's so much free help out there. If you can't figure it out, just please, please reach out to me and um, I will direct you to some um, nonprofits that are specifically made to help people that um, really are not seen, but want to be seen, but don't really want to be seen. Like help me, but don't help me, help me, but I don't need your help. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah. And that, and that just to let them know that you're not alone. You're not alone at this. You're not alone. You're mm -mm. not the only one. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You know, that's so true, but I, I've encountered this myself and with coaching clients is people are petrified of saying, I need help. Mm -hmm. People are afraid to raise their hand and say, look, you know what? I'm going through a tough time. Can you please help me? Um, I don't know if it's just a society or just our ego or our judgment, because obviously not asking for help is just self-judgment entirely. Because if you need help, you should seek it. If you're two-thirds, you're going to go to the dentist, right? And I'm going to wait. Oh, well, I'm going to mm -hmm. wait till my tooth falls out, and then I'll go see the dentist. No, you're going to get help right away. So, I mean, I, I've experienced this, and so with people I've coached. A lot of times, we just don't show up the same for every single person in our group, you know, our support group, let's say. And that becomes more embellishment because we show up different that when we need help, we don't know if we can show up that authentic self. So we're constantly hiding this. And, and, and Joan, like how do, how do the, the person out there right now that's looking for support, because there is no support. I, I can tell you this right now. I know a lot of people, there's only about maybe one to three I can count on all right, as support systems. And that's pretty much it. I mean, not even found me, I can rely on it, rely on myself. But I was ingrained in my mind from since I was childhood to maybe just a few years ago that be self-sufficient. And I mean by that is my dad always says, son, you need to rely on yourself because relying on people will obviously hurt you. So for decades, up until obviously two years ago, I relied on myself and I showed up not authentic to anybody. I was so fearful of being judged that I didn't create a sports system because obviously no one knew who I really was. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And that be created more suffering, more heartache, and it was hard because his, my dad's philosophy, which is my, was my belief system, is that 
Son, the more people you have in your life, the more problems. Less people you have in your life, less problems. Now, in the context at that time, the first thought is less people, right? And at the time, I was always saying, man, my dad's weird. You know, why is there less people? Now, what he's, I think what he's trying to say is, you know what? You got to be careful who you bring in your circle, your group, and realize when someone does not resonate with you and they're doing other things that not align with you want to do, you shouldn't socialize with them. And I, okay, I get that, you know. Um, but how, how do you really build a support system, Joanne? I mean, Joan? Keep saying Joanne. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I noticed that. You know, um, Ronald. Every a lot of people have a hard time with my with my name. It's I <laughs> okay, actually good. I'm not the only it, one. <laughs> no, 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 no. And um, uh, so much so that I was in a meeting when I had when I well get back to your question, but when I was actually going to an office every day for the government uh, had a meeting and this one per- person kept saying, and Joanne said this and Joanne said that. And I'm so used to people calling me Joanne that I don't even correct people. And so then finally one of my coworkers looks around and goes, wait a second, who is Joanne? And I'm like, Oh, sorry. That's me. Yeah. But, um, uh, so you, can you repeat the question? I got off on a tangent. Oh, no worries. So how do you find a support system when you are fearful of being judged? Okay. The way I start with almost all my clients is um, the wheel of life and values. So I just feel that if you find out what your values are and then you live by your values, not saying it's easy, but the road narrows a little bit. The other thing, the other thing I ask my clients is one of the most difficult questions, including you said, um, uh, asking for help. Um, excuse me. I had to sneeze. Um, what do you do for fun? I'll ask my clients, what do you do for fun? And they almost always don't have an answer. And then I go, Hey, I ask people this, people don't, a lot of people don't have an answer. This is a difficult question because we're doers. We're instead of do, human beings, we're human doers. And so to make connections, find out what you actually like to do. And there's all kinds of places where you can find people that are doing that same thing. Um, especially on like meetup or something like that. If you want to go hiking, you want to sew, you want to do quilting, you want to go fishing, you want to go on long distance fishing, um, seek out people that like to do what you do. But first, this is why I'm saying it all starts with self is what do you like to do? What is, what is the purpose of the connection? What is your motivation? Um, what do you have to give to this relationship? What do you want to get from the relationship? And um, some of those people that you're connected with, they may not ever be in your inner circle, but you get to go fishing. You know, not everybody has to be in my inner circle. Does that, does that make sense to you? That makes sense. Actually, I never heard explained that way is most people don't know what their values are unless they've really done some work on that. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Most time, what their values are outside values, like uh, value mm-hmm. a great education, value a great mm-hmm. career, value money, uh, value marriage. Mm-hmm. They, those are outside things. But when you really connect with someone as personal values, what, like you said right now, what brings you happiness? Bingo. Mm-hmm. That's where they find their values. Because I was thinking about myself, mm-hmm. right? So let's say my personal value is I, what I do for fun, believe it or not, is I like my downtime. I'm mm-hmm. uh, Aquarius. I'm in the fish tanks. Majorly, um, when I move to Bellingham, Washington, I will be buying a fish tank. One would probably be a thirty-gallon for my office, and one would be a mega tank, three hundred gallons plus. So it'll be very huge. I like that Jeez. because it gives me unity. It gives me feng shui. I love those. Um, second thing I'm into is I'm into remote control cars. So I love the little RC cars you build, a little gas engine. I love those kind of stuff. So it's really, it's really good for those out there. Um, as Facebook has, you know. I, after watching Social Dilemma, I don't, I don't know about social media that much, but it's a great way to connect with people. So I'm into certain things that maybe someone else not, may not be into or I never had experience doing, but I can create or find Facebook groups online. 
mm-hmm. that I can mm-hmm. be part of and we can share videos mm-hmm. about how to do a, a fish tank. And that's exactly. what I didn't realize was the key was, man, let me find someone. Let me, what are my values? It can be a hundred things. It can be five things, but the less the better. What are my values are? Okay. Now can I find people that fit those values? Because here's, here's a, a, a false perception. People look at me and me, they think I'm into sports. It's happened to me on countless occasions. So they talk about sports and talk about trades. And I'm like, I'm totally lost. That's not my, I'm not into that. Mm-hmm. And I said, like, mm-hmm. oh, you're not, but you're a guy. You shouldn't be in that. No, not really. And you, you ask, you kind of laugh to yourself. Like you never asked me a question. Am I into that? You just assume I should be in that because I'm a guy. So we just don't ask well, yeah. these, these great mm-hmm. questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A- assumptions. Assumptions, right? Mm-hmm. And that, I, we only know this after doing some great work with IPEC and our personal work. Mm-hmm. But people just assume, you know, you should be into this. No, I mean, whatever I want to be into because the world is great and I'm still alive. I don't care how old I am. I'm going to do what makes me happy. Like I said earlier, the beat of your own tune. Now, before we wrap this up, Joan, what is what is something, someone that's listening to this right now and someone that's going through a hard time with COVID, they can't see a family member, someone has died, pandemic, they're fearful, fearful of getting COVID. What is one powerful thing that would enlighten them before we end the podcast? You know, while we were talking, I brought up the Marianne Williamson quote. So I think I will end with that based upon the way you asked me that question, because I found like, I found that this was so uh, life changing. And, um, and then just from Joan, just don't give up hope. You're worthy. You're meant to be here and there's help out there. Okay. So here we go. And I'm going to read it with emphasis the way I hear it when I read it. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening, enlightened. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, We unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we liberate, as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. That's the end. Thank you very much. I will. I read that. I I saw one of his YouTube videos about motivation about ten years ago. Um, Actually, no, sorry, eight years ago. I heard the same thing. Um, and I always think about what I think about right now is in one of these motivation things, it talks about Rocky Balboa or uh, Stallone, as people know him uh-huh. as. It's not about how much you can, it's not about how hard you get hit. It's about how much you take and keep moving forward because that's how winning is done. So it's not about how hard you get hit. It's, yeah, you're going to get hit several times, but can you get back up and keep moving forward? And because that's how winning is done. So, I will never, ever forget that, and I will never forget um, how that has affected all of us. So, Joan, it was a pleasure having my podcast, and I definitely will have you again as another guest. Um, And as always, guys, this is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, motivational speaker. And like Joan said before, if you need help, reach out to myself, Gloria, or Joan. Let's live better, and let's get the hope we need. Thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. 